when dealing with a manufacturing entity, it is important to distinguish that we have basically three different departments. So we've got our factory here, and this is where our product is going to be made. And then we've got our admin office, and this is basically where all our admin staff sits um, behind the computers. You've got your IT staff, you've got your accountants, um, etc., your secretaries. And then finally, we've got our selling and distribution department. Um, and this is where we sell our product and we distribute that to our customers. Now, when we're looking at the cost for a manufacturing entity, it is important that we split our costs between the three different departments. So the cost related to the factory will be known as manufacturing costs. And this is all the costs related to making the product. So you ask yourself, did this cost in any way relate to making my finished product? And then it's going to be a manufacturing cost. So let's just assume that we're making tables here. So there we go. There is my lovely table. So all the costs related to the factory is known as manufacturing cost. And then we've got our admin office and all the costs related to the admin office will be known as administration costs. And then lastly, we've got our costs related to the sales and distribution department. And that is going to be known as sales and distribution costs. Now, before we look at specifically which costs fall within the factory and which ones fall within admin and which one fall with, falls within sales, the reason why it's important to know which costs go to the factory department is because it's the costs that end up in the factory department that eventually helps us to determine how much one finished product actually costs us. So. We're going to take all of the costs here in the manufacturing department and we're going to calculate a cost price for our finished product. And we need this cost price in order for the selling and distribution department to come up with a selling price that will actually be relevant um, so that we cover our costs and actually make a profit. So that's why it's important that we split our costs between manufacturing costs, which is everything in the factory, and basically the other two cost that we group of costs that we get is administration costs and selling and distribution which is sometimes just referred to as a whole as non-manufacturing costs so let's look at some manufacturing costs that we might have um, we might have salaries and wages related to our workers in the factory so salaries and wages of our well, who could work in the factory? It could be our workers. We may have a factory foreman who is in charge of the factory. We may have some cleaners. We may even have a security guard, etc. But all right, there we go. Salaries and wages related to factory personnel. Then we may also have depreciation. There may be some heavy machinery in the factory and we might have depreciation related to those machines depreciation of the machinery obviously we may not own this facility so we may have one big facility um, that has our factory admin offices and our sales little sales storeroom all on one premise premises um, or it could be separate premises but we may not own that, in which case we will have to pay rent for our factory. And then there may be water and electricity costs on top of the rent, possibly, if it's not included in the rent price. And then finally, obviously a very important thing that needs to go into this factory for us to get a finished product is some kind of raw materials. 
So we're going to have some raw materials that actually goes into the factory and it comes out as a finished product, which then eventually gets sold. Okay, so that's just some costs that we might find in the factory. Obviously, there's more, but we're just trying to get an idea in maintenance cost and insurance, etc. Some of our admin costs that we might find is salaries and wages as well. But in this case, we may have salaries related to the finance manager. So I'm just going to say finance manager or the IT manager or the HR manager or just the other clerks working in our admin office. All right. So again, we have salaries and wages, but this time it relates to our admin staff. Then we might, of course, also have to pay rent and we may also have depreciation, but this time it will be specifically the depreciation related to the equipment used within the office. Whereas here we had the depreciation related to the machinery used in the factory. Here we'll have the depreciation related to the computer equipment, the furniture, etc. Everything used in the office. So I'm just going to say computers and furniture. All right, so I think you're getting an idea here. And again, we might have again water and electricity. And then finally, our selling and distribution department. Here we may pay a sales commission to our sales agent. Um, we might have a salary, depending on the structure that we're going for. We may have to pay some water and electricity for this little facility, our storeroom there. And we may again have to pay some rent. All right, so there we go. That's just a brief summary of the different costs related to the different departments. Again, just to emphasize the reason why it's important that we split our cost between the three different departments is because, let me just get my mouse, my mouse here, is because the cost that goes into the factory is what eventually ends up in my uh, finished product. And we need to know how much costs goes into the finished product because we need to know the full cost price of our finished product before we can determine an accurate selling price. That's why it's very important when you get a list of costs that you can split and discern which ones relate to the uh, factory and we call those manufacturing costs and which ones relate well not to the factory and they can either then be admin costs or selling and distribution costs.